Good morning! Today we're going to go into the kitchen and I'm going to make some matcha with lemon. Lots and lots of lemon. You know, for all you like drink warm water with lemon every morning people. Yeah. Okie dokie, we're going to get started on this. Of course, this morning we're uh, outside. There's some big machinery. Matt Heinery that's out there making a lot of noise. I don't know whether they're chopping up branches or cutting up that big blue jet or what they're doing, but um, yeah, I might have to compete with that. So we're gonna make some matcha today, but we're also gonna incorporate some of that warm lemon water that they tell you is so good for you to drink in the morning. I'm gonna start out a little bit with uh, some water from the Zero Pitcher, not a paid endorsement. I already filled the pot for the most part, and uh, we're gonna warm the water up a little bit. While we're doing that, we're gonna prepare the matcha. I'm gonna take my little, my little spoon here. A little spoon. I'm gonna take my matcha, which is a green, which is a green tea that is very finely ground green tea. Look in there. It's like a powder. It's almost like toner. If any of you work in an office, you ever had a toner explosion? Yeah, that's not fun. But anyway, I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit so you can see what I'm doing up this end of the world. Okay, it's a very fat, finely ground green tea. The object with this green tea with the matcha is that you're not straining it, you're not steeping it. As such, what you're doing is you're actually drinking the ground tea leaves. Yeah, it's almost like an instant beverage. So anyway, I'm gonna take um, a little, a little sift here, and I'm gonna put it in this lovely little tea bowl that I have. And I'm gonna take a little bit of matcha. I, I like my matcha, so I'm gonna put two little demi-toss spoon-type deals. I got this matcha from Tea Nana. This is their um, Imperial Imperial. I don't know why they had to say it twice. Maybe they really like Imperial Matcha. Again, not a paid endorsement. None of my endorsements are paid. So you want to take in the sift and kind of like push it through and kind of stir it around because you want to get the lumps out of it. The lumps. The lumps. I'm also going to watch that water because you don't want it to be too hot. Uh, with most teas, you just want to get the water to that point where the little bubbles start to form and rise to the surface before boiling. You know, and then you got these tea purists who are like, uh, 175 degrees, steeping for 1.2 minutes. You do what works for you. Okay, I'm going to stop it there because it's just starting to get those little bubbles that we talked about in the earlier tea video. And matcha is gone. See, look at how the clouds just kind of come off of that. Um, you want your matcha to be like lump free. Lump free. Unlike your crab meat, which you want very lumpy. Anyway, okay, you want to take your whisk, little matcha whisk. Yeah, it's got a cute little Japanese name, but I don't know what it is. You know, I'm not going to be all hoity toity about this. Take a little tiny bit of water, just a bit, just a splash. Okay, just a little. And then you take your whisk and you kind of, this assures that there's even less lumps than. If, if, if somehow they started to clump again, um, you know, you get in there and you kind of make a smooth paste like this. You take your whisk and you make this smooth, nice little smooth paste with it. I don't know if this is looking good or not, but you make a paste. It should be smooth, no lumps. Kind of, um, wets all the grains and stuff, keeps it from clumping up when you actually add the water. Then what you want to do is, you want to take some more water. Again, this is to taste. I know that you can find videos on here with matcha purist nerd snobs, and they'll tell you, you know, exactly how much and in grams and whatever, milligrams and whatnot. And then you want to kind of make sure you get all the paste, kind of scrape it off the sides of the bottom of the bowl. And then once you've got that mixed, this is a, a, a very a very weird technique. 
what you want to do is you want to have a foam. Um, so to make the foam, you want to take the whisk and you want to kind of shake it back and forth. You don't want to drag it along the bottom anymore now. You want to, some, see some people shake it up and down. I find if I just get a couple of fingers like on either side of it, and I shake it right at the top. You want to make a nice foam out of it on the top? You don't want to do circles, okay? I don't know why that is, but you want to go up and down kind of like an M or a W shape. Now I'm kind of at an angle. You go side to side at the top, and you want to make this nice foam. And Matcha makes an amazing foam. I'm glad to tell you! Makes a really nice foam on the top. And while you're doing that, when you slow down, you want to kind of break the big bubbles with the whisk. And then go back in. You don't have to whisk forever, by the way. You know, just, just until you get that nice matcha. Want some matcha with you? Did I make that joke already? And you want to now break the larger bubbles. I don't know why that is. I guess that's a tradition thing. But you want this nice foam on the top. Okay? It's going to look disgusting. I'm going to warn you. It's, it's, a, it's a shade of green that no human should ever ingest. I'm going to take this and put it over here. Maybe you can see the foam. Foamy. There's a lot of big bubbles in there, but you know what? Again, not a matcha snob, so I'm not going to worry about that. And then I'm going to take my handy dandy Cutco spatula tool. I'm going to take a lemon. So I got a small lemon here. I usually tell you to put half a lemon in. Half a lemon in. And I'm going to put half of the small lemon. And I'm going to squeeze it all up in there. Now this lemon is cold. It came out of the fridge. So it'll cool off the, the matcha just a little bit. Try to squeeze out. I'm a cheap. You know what? All right. You can throw that in your garbage disposal and make it smell good. I'm just full of information today, right? And I'm going to whisk it for another couple of seconds. Just because I like that foam. And. Um... Okay. There. Now you can enjoy matcha in a tiny little cup that they make specifically for that purpose. This is a this is a uh, an espresso cup. I don't. I'm not going to use that because I go big when I go home. There's my tea cup. Anyway, I'm going to take that, pour it in. If there's a lot of foam in there stuck to the bowl, you can use the whisk to kind of take it out of there. I don't do that. Sometimes I even add a little more water because it can be kind of strong. And you know what? If you got a mug as big as this, you can whisk in the mug too. I did not speed this video up. I really do have cat-like tea reflexes. And there you go there. It's looking pretty good. Tasted really good. I can feel healthier already. See you!